Hello, in this video we're going to do something a little bit different than I usually do and we're going to review a article from Dean Fullman. It's a simple multivariate test for one-sided alternative. And so what that means if you want to test a mean vector is zero or are the components or do the components tend to be positive. So it's kind of like a one-sided test, sometimes it's called you know ordered alternatives etc. But the main theorem in this article is is about you know 15 lines and I want to go through that proof in this article which, which will take me a couple pages to fill in all the gaps. Um, so here I want to go through some notation first. Uh, we're going to let H0 be that all the components of the mean vector are zero and we're going to let h1 be that the components of the mean vector are all greater than or equal to zero and this is for all i 1 to p because it's a, a p dimensional vector we're going to uh, the mean vector is multivariate normal dimension p with mean vector mu and variance covariance sigma we can uh, find the uh, Chalatsky decomp of this. Well, this is a non-singular matrix. We're going to let the mean vector just be this. So uh, we take a sample of size n, calculate, you know, calculate the average, that's what this is. And this is going to be the sample uh, variance covariance matrix. Uh, the Hotelling's T squared uh, statistic is this and we're not going to recover much more than that but you can review it on your own just because of the length of the video and uh, Fullman's test was H1 versus H1 minus H0 and so what what this says the, you know of course the null is the mean vector zero and this one says the mean vector is greater than or equal to zero with strict inequality in, in at least one component. That's what this uh, notation means. The test statistic is the Hotelling's t squared and the sample mean vector. So then the rejection region is um, if t squared, which is your Hotelling's t squared statistic, is greater than or equal to a critical value. It's a two alpha critical value in the F uh, distribution and that the sum of the mean vector the sample mean vector is positive and again note that this is uh, 2 alpha so really it, that so the probability that T squared is greater than this is 2 alpha and the probability that that the the uh, sum of the mean sample mean vector is positive is 1 half so 1 half times 2 alpha is alpha, so that's how it becomes an alpha level test. So here is his theorem, the main result in the in the uh, paper, the manuscript, and it's essentially a, the, it deals with the power of this test statistic. So let's let's give a little background. So the mean vector or the vector is going to be multivariate normal dimension p mean vector mu variance covariance sigma. Uh, it's non-singular, it can be Chalatsky decomposition, and we're going to let the vector A be represented like this, where each component is the sum of the kth component of R. And so A can be thought of as this. So you transpose this and you get, so each component here is the sum of a column. So this is a sum of column 1, 2, all the way to P. We're going to let TA be an orthogonal transformation mapping A onto 1. And this right here, this is, I'm stating it like it says in the theorem, but onto 1 doesn't, it means a multiple of 1, you know, a positive multiple of that. Um, and here is the statement. So this right here is the power of the test. Well, assuming that the alternative is true. And so this, this sort of quadratic form can be thought of as the uh, Hotelling's t squared, or actually if uh, sigma 
is known, then this is the test. But th with probability one, the sample variance uh, uh, matrix is is non-singular. So you could just substitute the sample mean variance or the sample covariance matrix in here and that the components are positive. So this is the power. And there's a strict bound below by this. And which is the neat thing about this is you do the hotel is T squared test and then you do this test that is positive, which is a, and you're in the normal situation. And doing these tests individually are very easy, very straightforward. And so you can get a, an exact lower bound, or not, I don't know if exact is the right word, but you can get a strict lower bound for the exact power. And there's one small uh, criteria it's that whenever this uh, is, is greater than zero. So this is the orthogonal mapping of A onto the one vector. And so whenever this sum is, is greater than zero, then uh, it, it, this relationship is true. And when mu is zero, then, then this does equal this. And that's how it becomes an alpha level test, actually. So this is a two alpha level, and this is one half, which multiplied together is alpha. And so when we're under the null hypothesis, it's, a, it's an alpha level test. So let's go through the proof. Um, here is the power of the test. So the uh, hotel is T squared greater than some cutoff value and that the sum of the mean vector is, is zero. And uh, so we want to show that it's greater than or equal to the, the product of these two individuals. Now, if we divide this over, then then it becomes a conditional statement and then this comes down so let's do a, a transformation let's let u equal r inverse x where this is the Chilet, one of the matrices in the Chilevsky decomp and then let note that mu prime mu is when you plug in here and here then take the transpose in you get this but this right here is the uh, sigma squared inverse. So mu is equal to this. So notice this piece is right here and here. Now a times u, if we plug in those, so, so a is uh, r prime, you know, transpose of r times one prime, and then this is u, and you multiply this out and you get one prime x, which is what this is. So we can actually uh, put u here, u, u, and a, u here. And that's what the next page tells us. Oh, I... I, I flipped it too soon sorry about that so uh, 2 is equivalent to this so what we did was we put u u here and a u here and u u here so these two statements are equivalent now let's do another transformation let's let v be this orthogonal mapping of a onto the one vector of u. Now u was r inverse x. So t is the orthogonal mapping that makes this assumption happen. So now let's look at v. v prime v is we plug in this for both of those and after some reductions that is equal to u u. And then if we look at a which is r prime 1 and the orthogonal mapping of a is equal to some multiple times the one vector. That's the assumption, which implies that uh, this right here is TR prime, because this is A, and this orthogonal mapping, which is T, is equal to some multiple of the one vector. That's what this says here. Now, if we take T prime to the other side, because it's orthogonal in, in the inverse, you know, 
And so if you multiply it times t prime, that is i, which you get this. But over here, and that's a constant, you get t prime 1. And this is for k greater than or equal to 0. Now, au is, you can plug, you know, u was this and a is this. But a is actually r prime 1. So then transpose that. Then the r's. Oh, but this r prime 1 we said was this right here. So it goes in. And then you take the prime of those and you get this. But um, t r prime x was v. So we can call it v. So k 1 prime v. So what that tells us that 3 is equivalent to this. So this, well, this was uu. We can stick in vv. And then this was um, au, right? Yeah. So au was is k1v. So we can put in k1v here. And then, of course, where it said uu, we can put in vv. But a, co a positive constant here, you can just divide it to the other side, and we and we get this. So, and actually, I think in the proof they they skip this step. It's not it's not very obvious that it should be k times the one vector, but it is. Otherwise, we're being restricted too much. Okay, so now let's go through some notes. The expected value of v is now is uh, you take the expected value into the x, which is mu. So the expected value of v is this, which is actually the orthogonal mapping of our inverse mu, because that's what t represents. And let's call that eta. Um, so the variance of v is the variance of this. But on the variance, you take this out front, then you transpose that out back, and you get this. But the r, you know, you know, r inverse, r inverse prime, and 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 sigma cancel, leaving t and t, which is uh, those are orthogonal, so it's just the identity matrix. And so that tells us v is multivariate normal with this mean vector and and variance covariance identity. And now remember, v can be thought of as v1, v2 through vp. It's a vector. Okay, so um, if we define s squared as, you know, we look at these components and we define s squared like this, the sample variance of those, and v uh, bar, the mean of these, because they're independent and they're multivariate normal, these two quantities are independent. That's a sort of a well-known result there. Now, if we look at V prime V greater than C, so that's this piece here, then this can be thought of as the sum of the VI squareds greater than C. But then if we add and subtract the same quantity, that's zero, which doesn't change it. But then this can be thought of as S, and then this is P times V squared all still greater than c. And then if we subtract the s squared over and divide by p, we get this. So now if we plug in this, well also uh, this here is just the sum of vi's, which then you can uh, divide both sides by p and you get the mean vector. So 4 is equivalent to this. So if we plug in what we just derived into this, now, v bar and s squared are independent. And so in the, in the proof of the theorem, it just says because they're independent, we only need to be concerned about this. But this, to me, going from here to here is not as straightforward as I, it, it sort of indicates in the proof. So here, the, you know, you have two variables, v and s, and you know, the region ends up being this. And so when you integrate out for any possible C, then it, you know, and I, this to me took a page to, to really justify going from here to here. I'd love anyone to comment on that and why 
that is an easy step where I didn't think it was. But it is it is true and relevant, but it takes a much more justification, at least to me, just to say they're independent, so we need to worry about this. So now, um, some notes, V is multivariate normal with this mean and this covariance, but V bar is multivariate normal with, you know, the you know, the mean of those, that components, and it's one over P. So this is a, this is, so this is a vector, and this is a number, right? Because we're adding the components and then dividing by P. So this is, um, it's actually a number. I don't know why I put a P component there. It's not, it's not P. It's one. So now, and and so the, it's multivariate normal with dimension one. So you can just say it's normal with this mean and this variance. Um, so now this, you're just bringing it down. And if we uh, take one minus this and one minus that, it doesn't change it. Instead of but being greater than B, we're less than B. And same way here. And then you can subtract one from both sides, take that over, take this over, and you get this quantity here. Now, this right here, the conditional expectation is this probability. And since V is a normal distribution, not, you know, you know not multivariate, it's normal, then uh, these, you can just use the um, CDF, the CDF of a normal. So here, if you subtract the mean divided by the standard deviation, you know, then it's standard normal. So if we if we go from that point down and we subtract off this point, then this is this probability. The same way here. So to make it standard normal, subtract the mean, divide by the standard deviation, and, and this is the top part. And then of course here, you know, you minus the mean, divide by the standard deviation. So this can be represented like this. Now, to, to save on notation, if we let gamma be this uh, square root of P divided by, you know, A to bar, and C is P times B, then these quantities can be rewritten in this form. Then, now we want to simplify this, so multiply this piece over. And we get this. So we just, this was divided by it, now we multiply it. And in my, in what happens next, took maybe, you know, seven or eight lines of proof to go from here to here. And in the interest of time, I just go, and you can make this equal this. Um, in, the, in the manuscript, I think they just jumped to this. So now, by assumption, gamma is this, um, which you know, and you, we put we replace what this is, which which is this piece here, and then by assumption, this has to be positive. So if if gamma is positive, so the this is true because the result follows if. Um, Psi is this, and it's in its monotone decreasing in x for any c greater than zero. Then this, fo and it follows from the log concavity of the CD, the standard normal CDF, and this can be uh, seen in this manuscript, page 52. And it should be noted that if mu is zero, then uh, gamma is zero, and thus six and hence one hold as equalities. So anyway, so I, I'm gonna stop here just because we're running short on time, but the, this one-sided multivariate test is pretty simple. It's easy to use. It is an alpha level test, and we just went through the proof for you. Hope you enjoyed it, I sure did. Um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks, bye.